Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about Easter eggs. Specifically, I want to talk about Easter eggs that are in games that I worked on that have something to do with me or that I've talked about before, but I don't see very widespread that people have either talked about the Easter egg but not really much about it. <clears throat> Which, by the way, is interesting. I find a lot of um, people online <clears throat> love to talk about games as if the people involved with them are gone, have, are just, they're, they're no longer around. And then they guess at things and they're like, we don't know why this happened. Or it's, I literally watched a video the other day that was like 10 big mysteries about early games. And by early games, he met games in the mid to late 90s. And he was wrong on most of them. I was like, that isn't why that was done that way. And they weren't even games I had worked on. It was just, I knew about them. So it was very strange. Um, and I get that a lot of them are probably clickbait. But these are Easter eggs that I kind of want to give more information about just because they meant something to me. First one I'll talk about is an Easter egg in Fallout. There was a dog that hung out behind the cathedral. And... This dog was thrown in as an homage to a producer at Interplay, Vince DiNardo, who would frequently bring his dog, Sasha, to work. I love dogs, and Sasha was awesome. I th think Chris Taylor put Sasha in. I don't know. But I thought it was really cool that the dog made it into the game. And then I think in Fallout 2, there's somebody wandering around calling out for Sasha which is like a throwback to this Easter egg in Fallout 1. So that was fun. Um, next, there's a couple things about Arcanum. One, I see a lot of people identifying photos as the original development team. And they always get Chad as a half-ogre, uh, Leonard as, I believe, Virgil. But they always miss out on my portrait, which is this one. And I don't even know what character my, what NPC my portrait was used for. Maybe it's not used for one. If you guys know, let me know. Um, I know it's available for you to pick as a player portrait. But I always think it's funny that I, I, see, I see pictures where they, they have a picture of the development team and point to them and say, here's their portrait from the game. <laughs> and there's nothing for me. I'm like, I'm right there. Um, the other thing I want to talk about Arcanum is, and this is I know this seems weird to talk about this. It's 2024, 23 years later, but it was something that someone did. Um, there was an island called the Island of Despair, the Isle of Despair. It was a prison island. You go there looking for the banished Black Isle uh, uh, Wheel Clan, Black Clan? What was it? The, the Wheel Clan. Um, and somebody, there's a, a one-line throwaway thing that you may have missed where when you're asking someone how to get to the Isle of Despair, he's like, you don't want to go there. It's terrible. It's a prison island. It's the Black Isle. And pe people did notice it, of course, because as I've said many times, if you put something in a game, people will, will say, look, look and know what it is. Yes, it was a reference to Black Isle Studios. I talked to the writer who did it. And he said, yeah, I was kind of digging on Black Isle. I apologized for this in 2016, which was 15 years too late, uh, to some of the people at Obsidian who were from Black Isle. Now, even though I didn't write this, so and this isn't the first time I've apologized, though, on the behalf of someone else. Um, I've even done this on this channel, which was interesting because everybody assumed I was apologizing for me. And I wasn't, and I didn't say I did. But it's amazing how much people miss and make assumptions about videos. But I will, if I was in charge of a project, even if I was one of several people in charge, and somebody does something that's not right, I will apologize. Because guess what? When you're in charge of something, that responsibility comes along with the authority. Which I could do a whole video about throughout my career, not just recently, although I see a lot of examples of it recently, of people who want power, but they don't want responsibility. They want to be in charge of a project, but they don't want to make the big decisions. Or they want to make a decision, they want you to do what they say, but they don't actually want to be in charge. They don't want to be have that decision connected to them in case it goes wrong. 
That happens a lot. So yes, I will apologize to people on behalf of someone on a project that I was in charge of. And I, I'm gonna do it again on this video. But now let's jump to Temple of Elemental Evil, uh, Troika's second game. Um, I mentioned this in a couple videos, about one about Temple and one about my brother's funny characters. But you may know that there was a character in there that was based on my brother's bard. This is his character sheet, Ziaxis Montalban. You may wonder why his last name was Montalban. And if you look at the portrait, that is a picture of Ricardo Montalban, who was the, in 1980, was the star of Fantasy Island. And the reason he's wearing what looks to be like the top of a onesie or a tutu or whatever is because he was in Circus of the Stars doing um, fancy high wire acts. And my brother, there, there was a picture in the paper of him. My brother cut it out and glued it on to his character sheet. Thanks, Windows. Glued it on to his character sheet for Z-Axis and renamed him Z-Axis Multiple. So you can actually encounter Z-Axis as a random encounter in Temple. It's completely random on the world map. You run into him. He's looking for his sister, Ima, who is an illusionist and left home. And Z-Axis has a personal quest of going to find her. Anyway, thought that was funny. Thought you should know where Z-Axis came from. So now let's talk about Vampire Bloodlines, which as I've said, I didn't work on that much. I only worked on it the last year and a half. And I mainly did programming, coordination, and AI for some of the bosses. However, years after this thing came out, the game came out, I discovered that this was in the game. You're looking at the base of a microphone in one of the clubs, and there's a sticker on it that says, Bis sucks. Apparently, a lot of people, including people at Black Isle Studios, thought this was yet another dig at them. It was not. And I apologized to the people who thought it was because I tracked down what happened. Here's, here's the skinny on it. There was an artist at Troika. That was his first job. He had never worked at Black Owl Studios. This had nothing to do with Black Owl Studios. He put that sticker on the microphone stand, which is he, he had been in charge of making, because a lot of us over on the Temple of Elemental Evil team were listening to the new release from... BIS, B-I-S, BIS, the indie Scottish rock band. They had just released an album called Plastique Nouveau. You should give it a listen. Love that album. And we listen to it all the time. Um, and he didn't like it, and he got sick of us playing it all the time. So he put that sticker in there. Oh, my God. Everybody thought it was a dig at Black Owl Studios. It was not. <laughs> he didn't even know what was going on when that came out. So, by the way, Biss is touring again if you want to if you want to see him. Let's jump to Pillars of Eternity. Um, a lot of people don't know that the monk class in there was based on a monk class I did for Wildstar at Carbine. I did not know it was cut. It wasn't shipped. It was one of the original nine classes that were there for and in the game for the last three years I was there. I created them in the first few months I was there. Those nine classes were kind of like set in stone, um, although one of them wanted to get taught. The elementalist was supposed to get tossed out at some point. But anyway, the monk was in there because the artists on Carbine, one of their requirements was that every class be designed to have a unique silhouette. So you could tell by the armor they were wearing, how they stood, and the weapon they were holding, what their class was, which they thought was very important in an MMO that had PvP combat. The monk was my reaction to that when, okay, let's have a character that has no weapon that does hand-to-hand -hand combat. It got cut, but I really liked the some of the system mechanics I made for it. So it was reworked for pillars, and that's where the whole wound idea came from, that as monks take damage, they get wounds, and then they spend that wound to power their more powerful attacks. So monks want to get hurt, because when you hurt them, it comes back to you. It's very karma. So people who didn't know the monk came from Wildstar, sure did. Let's jump to Pillars Deadfire, which I only worked on for a few weeks. But it turns out I made it into the game. Here's my portrait. 
And this portrait was used on Jacob Harker, who's a bartender in the game. I didn't even know this. Someone pointed this out online, and I'm like, hey, I'm in Pillars of Deadfire. So didn't know that. Thought that was kind of cool. And then the last one I want to talk about is in Outer Worlds. Um, if you have ever heard me talk about chocolate, or you look at my chocolate blog, which I will link below, you know that I'm not a big fan of white chocolate. When I was away on a trip somewhere, somebody who was never discovered hid 17 bars of white chocolate, specifically Nestle White Chocolate Crunch, in my office and left a ransom note on the desk. And I say ransom note because it was pr it was a printed note, but it, it was made up of letters cut out from other notes. And it basically said, there are 17 bars hidden all around your office. Hope you find them all. I immediately started searching. Some of them were very cleverly hidden. I found, I think I found about a dozen the first day. And they were things like, you know, taped behind my monitor or um, one was under the pillow. There was a chair an overstuffed chair in my office and one was under the pillow there. But there were a few of them that I didn't find for weeks. They were superly cleverly hidden. One of them, we had a, a landline phone and it was a pretty big phone because you could dial different extensions on it. If you picked it up, it was on little teeny um, feet, little like rubber feet. It turned out one of the bars fit perfectly under it and was taped there. So... You had to pick up the phone and look underneath it. You could move the phone around. You could pick it up and there wasn't anything there because it was stuck to the bottom. That one was hard to find. Um, here's the thing. I only found 16 of them. And this was done, I think, in 2017. So I left Obsidian three years later. I had that same office. I only found 16 bars. Never found the 17th bar. If you're wondering, that's why there's a bar in the Outer Worlds called the 17th Bar. And that's why Tim Kaine's White Chocolate Yummies appears as an item in the game. And I played Whack-A-Mole with that item. It would pop up in one of the playthroughs I would do. And I'm like, come on, guys, don't put chocolate yummies in there. And they'd take it out and put it on the loot list of something else. So you can still find Tim Kaine's White Chocolate Yummies in the Outer Worlds. And that's why it's there. It kind of commemorates that 17th bar that I never found along with the bar called the 17th bar. I know there's a, the 17th bar is in Roseway. There may be other ones too. Anyway, there. There's a bunch of Easter eggs I wanted to talk about going all the way back to Fallout and then all the way up to the Outer Worlds. Hope you like this.